In our previous videos, we've gone through designing this panel and mounting all of our components. And now we're ready to wire it up. Now, I am going to speed through most of this wiring and occasionally I'm going to stop give you a few tips, but check out the description because there is a great link with a lot of videos that will answer questions you have on the way. We have done videos on wire sizing, on wire colors, on when should you fuse the secondary side of your transformer to can you put more than one wire in a lug? Really, we have covered a lot of aspects of this, so check out that link below and let's get started. couple of common questions that I get is, first of all, how much extra wire should you put in your wire duct? And I see this go both ways. I see some that put it so tight that it almost pulls the wire duct. And then I see ones that have extra wire wrapped all in it. What I do is usually try to go to the opposite side of the wire duct and back. So that's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room in here but not so much that it fills the wire duct with extra material. Also, should you put ferrules on your wires? There is no requirement per UL to use a ferrule, but it does make life a lot easier when you are initially wiring it, but more importantly, when someone changes a component, it'll keep your panel looking much neater. And wire labels. Yes, every wire needs a wire label. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, okay, if we're going up and down, should it be from that you read it from the left or read it from the right? I say whichever way you're standing normally in the panel, make it where you read it that way as a panel builder, but do the same thing throughout. In other words, don't make it that half of it I look this way, and all of a sudden I have to turn my head the other way. So since I'm building the panel from this side, I'm going to make it where my eyes can read everything from this side, and I'm going to keep that uniform all the way through. I know I said feral like everybody knows what a feral is, but a feral are these things. If we don't put them on, your wires can up all frayed. But if we keep these on, that'll keep our wires neatly tight. Do a crown, and now it's ready to install. Our goal throughout is to try to have some nice lineup of our wires. Kind of make sure that they're evenly distributed through our fingers. I like the thin finger for this very reason. And going back up to our amount of extra, one thing is try to make sure everyone's the same length. This will just make it where whoever is going behind you will really think you did a professional job. Also, many of you are probably wondering, well, why didn't I just use one of these jumpers? It would have saved me a lot of time. We already talked about the pitfall of using this in our STCR short circuit current interrupt rating video. Most transformers will come with a secondary fuse head, and we've already talked in a previous video about the pros of doing a primary fuse head as well. Now, I actually have our primary and our secondary fuses over here. So let's talk a little bit real quick about wiring this. So my high voltage is gonna be 240 volt, my low voltage is going to be 110 volt. So I'm going to need a jumper between two and three on both the high and the low, and then four and five. And it comes with these little jumpers right here, and that's what you're going to cover. Also, if you notice, I am not using an impact driver on the wire. And that's really a bad thing to do. You want to either use a regular screwdriver, or you can use the torch screwdriver that we talked about in the tools section. Now, Mary Bruce is building... You'll see trainers today, and she uses it, and so she stole it from me, so I am stuck with a manual screwdriver. One thing about wire duck is the individual fingers, they are designed to be broke out as needed, but obviously there is no putting it back, so make sure that it is the one you want. So in this case, I want this cable lined right up with this. So I'm just going to reach down here. And all I'm going to do is press down. And that actually makes it where it snaps right out. And along with that on the wire duct, I typically do not break out these on the intersections until they're full because it just kind of helps manage the wire, keeps them pressed down in where they're not kind of rolling out of the wire ducts.
when working with cabling is I'm pretty sure I don't need the red wire, but I'm not going to cut the red wire until I actually test this out. And also get you a good cable stripper. This is one from Phoenix Contact. We already have a video on it, along with a lot of tools that you're seeing here. One question I just thought has probably come out up in a lot of your minds is, what size wire should you use? Per UL, the minimum wire size for a power circuit is going to be 14 gauge. And after that, you're going to need to calculate your amperage versus wire size. And in the description, you will find a link that has resources on all of that. Oh, and also, you know, if it is control voltage, you know, doesn't actually say. And so personally, I use 18 gauge. Now I'm going to continue wiring the rest of this panel. I'm not actually going to show you all that because at this point it would be a boring video. But I did want to give you an example of what you should be looking for in your control panel. So you should be looking to get as straight a lines as possible. Make sure you use good labeling. And yes, in the next video we will talk about all the labeling that should go on our device components. But nice straight lines. One thing I do see missing from a lot of panels is grounds. Anywhere you see a ground symbol, you should have a ground. So notice over here on this RCX340 from YRG, there is a PE with a little ground symbol on it. That means we do need a ground right there. All right. Now that it's all done, we're ready to mount it in our enclosure. And click here where we're going to get a little few tips before we do. And then we can start wiring our field devices.